Mr. Jack Donovan, hello. Howdy, sir. Here is Piero from the other side of the world. Hi, how is it going on the on the west coast of the U.S. now? Oh, it's going great for me. <laughs> Excellent. The rest of it, but, uh, it's good, good for me. Yeah. Excellent. Well, you know, it's about one year that uh, your book, The Way of Man, La Voix Virile, in French, um, has been out, and it's doing very, very well here in uh, here in the French-speaking countries. I assume. <laughs> Some people have read it in Quebec, but uh, and I guess in Guadeloupe, in all these crazy islands where the French have been colonized. But but certainly in France, Switzerland, and Belgium has been sold uh, quite a lot of thousands of copies, and it's uh, it's still. I, I would check in today in the top thousand books of uh, Amazon, which is which is very nice um, yeah. for for your book. I believe in the U.S. it's doing also very very well. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually just signed to have it. Uh, there's going to be translated into German. And also into Portuguese. It's already out in Portuguese. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's doing very well in the United States. Actually, it's done better over the past year than it did over the first two years. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think the reason why is that uh, it just – there are so many men actually buying it and passing it to each other because uh, I haven't really gotten any mainstream media attention. And uh, people always ask me – it would be, it'd be easy to get, really. I mean I could just poke, poke the bear a few times and, and, and get it. But uh, you know, I have really, really accomplished guys uh, passing it out to their friends. I have military officers passing it out to their, their uh, people in their squads and so forth. Uh, I do a lot of autograph copies from fathers who want to give it to their sons. Uh, I mean, it's really, which is really humbling. And, uh, you know, so I just have a lot of uh, word of mouth, I think, has really helped it spread. And also I do a lot of podcasts here, so uh, like this one. And uh, so that, that seems to help as well. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's doing far beyond ever my expectations. I, I, I actually stopped doing numbers a while ago uh, because, it, yeah, but uh, I'm pretty sure that including France, we're up to, I don't know, like 25,000, something like that. Yeah, it's really good. So, so, yeah. So Germany will never be the same after your book. <laughs> yes, I made some off-color jokes when I uh, 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 found out about that, but uh which I'm sure the Germans wouldn't appreciate, but it'll, it'll be fun. It's quite amazing, and, and that leads me to, to the next question, but it's quite amazing to hear that Germany, of all countries, has fallen to the point where they need a book to tell them how to find the way of men. I mean, they used to be the uberman of, yeah. of all men. I mean, uh, I mean uh, not, not only them. Actually, and that leads me to the question is, in today's world... Uh, Why do men need to rediscover what it means um, to be a man? Well, uh, you know, our lives are so easy. You know, we're, we're so sheltered from everything. And, and uh, most, most young guys who grew up today have actually never been in a fight. Um, most, including me, a lot of them are just afraid they're going to get sued <laughs> if they get into a fight. Uh, You know, there's, there's so many laws everywhere kind of restricting their behavior and making sure that everybody's safe, and uh, everybody's very coddled. Uh, you know, in, in the book The Way of Men, I talk about the, the perimeter, and it's always been the job of men to pre protect that perimeter. And uh, we are the people inside the perimeter now. We're always inside of it. We're never on the edge, except for a few guys, which uh, those are the guys who I, you know, I respect the most who really like the book. I, I get a lot of... Uh, special forces and ex-special forces guys who like the book and so forth. And they are actually on the perimeter. But uh, uh, most, most of us are just inside the perimeter and we're always protected. So we're almost like women and children. So of course we have to, uh, you know, you know we, we still have the desire to be men. But, uh, you know, we get so many messages that masculinity is bad and, and there's toxic masculinity and uh, there's something going around on the internet today that, uh, uh, You know, the Vanderbilt University says that, uh, you know, men's, men who uh, have big muscles, uh, you know, are, are promoting toxic masculinity and you should stop going to the gym immediately. Uh, you know, all these kind of messages and, and guys know that they're wrong, but they don't really know how to defend them. You know, they don't really know how to respond. So uh, I think one of the things that the way of men uh, helps them with is, you know, they get boxed into a corner when people say, well, what is masculinity? Uh, I think the way of men helps them articulate their answer, which they already felt inside their head. I'm not, I didn't say anything new. I just uh, packaged it in a way that other men can understand. I heard yesterday a comment on, on a video that was 
I was doing telling how much your book is important. And it was, and they were and of course I put a picture of you and they say well I don't and someone said I don't want to hear about the way of man from someone who's um, who's um, who's so strong and muscular because obviously that must mean that it's shallow and 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 so on and I was and I didn't answer because I never answered these comments but suddenly I was thinking um, I wonder how shallow you would think of someone who's strong when 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 you need protection pro protection and um, as you say uh, strength. Uh, which is also is mental, but is obviously uh, at the basic of survival. Physical strength uh, is about muscles, uh, and uh, it's not about uh, bodybuilding, but it's about efficient. Uh, and you mentioned special forces. Uh, these guys are not uh, women. Most you know they are they are strong men, and that has value. And um, how far we have fallen when when we hear fellow men. Uh, Talking like a woman, not yeah, even like a woman, but worse yeah. than a woman, like a child. Well, they're, they're you know, uh, people don't like uh, the idea that masculinity has something to do with strength if they feel like they're not strong, because then <laughs> you know it's very easy to say, oh well, masculinity can't be about that because that's not me. Because of course, all men want to reframe the argument in terms of like ways that make them seem more masculine. Uh, uh, my favorite example is like philosophers always like to, to say, well, philosophers, you know, in the platonic order of things, like there's the philosopher king that's, of course, above everybody because he tells everyone how to live, you know, and uh, so he must be better than the guardians and all these other people. And, and uh, uh, you know, it's all part of our desire to become as to be seen as men. So we want to re reframe it in a way that makes us feel more manly. Uh, you know, engineers always think that oh, I build things. Therefore, that is, the man that is far manlier than just plain violence you know uh so i mean uh i think that there's also this idea that you cannot be strong and smart at the same time which is of course extremely foolish and uh is that has never really been the case it's just i don't know whether people watch too many movies with nerds and jocks uh fighting with each other or what but uh I mean, uh, obviously, like those special forces guys. I mean, a lot of them have master's degrees. Of course, you cannot uh, be you know, special I mean, forces. I, I, they, the power lifters I work out with, uh, a lot of them have master's degrees, or they're engineers, or they're they're really really smart, articulate guys. And uh, so, I mean, the idea that you can't be smart and strong is is foolish. And, and the idea that I would advocate uh, being dumb and uh, and strong, just you know, for the sake of being strong, is also kind of uh, it, certainly not everything, not anything I would talk about. Uh, certainly no special forces, no one in those teams can be stupid because these are, requires a lot of brain. And, and I believe that most philosophers in the past, I mean, no one has a picture of uh, Socrates or Plato or, or Tissusides or these guys, but these guys were fighters. They were fighting in the Greek army of the city. So they, they weren't wimps, for sure. One of them was a wrestler, I believe. I'm not sure it was Plato. Or, I think it was Plato. Could, could be, but, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he was known for wrestling. So, so indeed, um, as the late, late Latin people, the Romans would say, uh, "Men sana and corpora sana." A healthy mind has to go with a healthy body. Yes. Um, now, the um, you mentioned you mentioned strengths, and another one that seems to be forgotten today, in fact, even inverted, is honor, uh, that you explain very well in your book. Today's world seems to be the, dis the the world of the dishonorable man, starting with the politi politicians down to all levels of society and the way certainly the way movies and TV shows portray men are wimps and more than wimps dishonorable people you you would never want to be next to in in any difficult uh, situation actually you would you would actually shoot them before before they ha they hinder you in a survival situation yes well it, it kind of in many ways I think it's because our society is organized around money rather than identity first because honor has to do with uh, you know a group of men that are part of your community, and if you don't really have a community and you, you're just really like evaluating things by uh, financial decisions, um, it's easy to when something becomes disadvantageous, you can just rationalize a way to back away from it. Uh, whereas honor is actually always hard. Uh, if you're doing it right, uh, being honorable uh, sucks. <laughs> it's not fun. Uh, usually when I'm making a choice that has to do with honor, it's because I'm doing something I don't want to do. Uh, you know, I'm doing something I don't want to do either because, you know, I feel like um, I have to live up to the expect expectations of, of my peers 
uh, or because I've said I was going to behave a certain way, therefore I have to do it, even if it's uncomfortable or annoying uh, or, you know, uh, difficult. And, uh, you know, so honor is hard. And so the easiest thing in the world is to be dishonorable. Uh, you know, honor, if you, if you just uh, don't, if you say that you don't care about what any other men think of you, um, it's easy to imagine, A, that you're some fantastic thing that you really aren't, and uh, B, that, um, you know, uh, you know, it, it, just that you're not, uh, I don't know, uh, it, you know, it's just easy to imagine that you're something that you're not, and it's, and it's easy to, to change situations as it's more convenient to you. And I think that's really kind of a sad way to live, and it's kind of empty. And, uh, you know, I'd rather – I mean, I, I swore into a tribe this year, and uh, so, you know, the, when people say we, I know who my we is. Like, I know who their faces are. And a lot of people don't. They have, like, five friends who they think might help them move. <laughs> you know, maybe, if it's convenient. You know, and, and if they provide pizza and beer. Uh, but, uh, you know, most people, they, they really don't have that many friends like real, real friends that they can really depend on. And, uh, you know, if you don't have that, I mean, uh, of course it's easy to be dishonorable because you're, you're just floating out in the world uh, and you can just change it to whatever people want from you. So. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So this world that we float in at this point, how do you see it uh, evolving, especially from your American perspective? How do you see this, um, this thing that we live in evolving and going into? Well, what, one thing that is happening right now is that uh, a lot of people are – there's a big current of people who really have been pushed too far with political correctness. Uh, I think there's just a lot of guys who are just – I think, as they say, uh, uh, the uh, social justice warriors uh, jump the shark. Uh, and I think uh, it was kind of funny. They were trolled. Uh, some of the feminists were trolled actually recently. Uh, some guys made up this hashtag, uh, piss for piss yourself for equality. And a lot of actual feminists actually started posting pictures of themselves, pissing themselves just because, you know, you know, it was, it was just a prank, but uh, they actually believed it and started doing it. There's and so uh, that's much. kind of where we're at right now with, with that level of social justice warriors and, and so forth. And so, I mean, while I think that, uh, you know, people are still, you are getting fed up with that kind of political correctness. I don't see it really changing. In terms of it's still so easy, you know, the idea of globalism is so big and, you know, it's, it's tied to, you know, a world kind of organized around money that uh, we're, you know, wealth is the highest value. Um, you know, it's, you know, the masculinity and things like that are kind of a threat to interests, uh, established interests. Uh, you know, so I don't see it changing. It's never going to you can never go wrong flattering women and saying that, you know, like you're strong and you're, you're fantastic and you're amazing. Uh, just for if they do anything. But, uh, if you tell men to, to man up and, uh, to take charge of things, uh, that's very threatening. Uh, you know, because, uh, they really don't want men to, to man up and take charge of anything. Um, because that'll just create a lot of problems for established powers. So, um, I don't really see that changing in terms of uh, how the world deals with masculinity. So, um, you know, a as you've said, uh, things uh, things very well may fall apart. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that happens. If it's going to happen, I hope it happens while I'm young enough to enjoy it. But, uh, or at least to see it burn. Uh, <laughs> but uh, and We can you know, dance uh, in front of the fire. Yeah, yeah. I'm not, no, I don't know if I'm going to survive it, but I, I definitely want to be there to see it. Uh, but, uh, you know, I mean, that's kind of the best case scenario the worst case scenario is it just like going on and on and people getting weaker and weaker and weaker because they're kind of being bred down i think to a mm -hmm. certain extent you know i mean we're, i mean someone had mentioned uh the chinese and how you know like they're very they're not very creative in many ways because they're, they're so they've been following rules and bureaucracy for so long and they're, you know they're less gender gender differentiated than than we are and uh you know, and, uh, you know, wonder if we're just becoming more Chinese in the sense of like, you know, just have people who are just, you know, want to follow the rules and, you know, uh, not, not really, you know, rock the boat. Uh, it, I think a lot of people would like that, <laughs> you know, so I, I would hope that that's not going to happen. At the same time, in today's world, they, that I agree, and of course my books talk about that, is uh, I think on the brink of collapse, if, 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 and I think it has already started to collapse. At the same time, and it's linked, 
They bring over, in the US it's Latin Americans, but also Africans, and in Europe they bring Africans and um, Middle Eastern people, which um, are not very bright in general, because of, let's say it's education, let's not go into any polemics, but certainly also are tribal, and used to be men, in the, in the noble sense of men. They are following yeah. the way of men forever, and suddenly there is this collision, which reminds me that old movie Zardoz was Sean Connery in in in, in weird in that fantastic outfit. Yes, yes. in that fantastic yes. red red little briefs. But suddenly that that really showed when barbarians get into a decadent uh, womanly society. I mean, the 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 men who act like women get slaughtered, and the women get raped, and that's it, and they take over, and. Um, uh, do you see people realizing that? Do you see this kind of self... Uh, do you think we're going to su- to some sort of suicide or people are waking up? Or both? Both. Both. I mean, some people are, some people will make excuses for other groups. And, I, and it's, as you said, they, they're tribal. Yeah. They're in many ways doing what I advocate. Uh, they just never stop doing it and we stop doing it. Um, I advocate us, us doing the same thing, you know, uh, in fact, uh, you know, my new book is a little bit about how to ha- have that mindset because we've been trained to love the whole world and the world doesn't necessarily love us. So, you know, you, and, and you can't love the whole world anyway. It's like uh, your brain can't actually do that. So, uh, you, know, you, you know, we have to make the leap to become a little bit more tribal like those people. And, uh, you know, if we can't do that, then, uh, yeah, they'll just, uh, you know, the other groups who are willing to uh, take care of theirs first uh, will come out on top eventually. Because as you, as you write in your book, strength, honor, um, are certainly values that we see in, in the people across the world, except, except our part of the world. Um, yeah. How about the other two virtues? Uh, do, do, how, how do you see them uh, being developed for us? Mastery? Um, well, uh, courage and mastery, I mean, that's, uh, you know, we're protected all the time in terms of courage. So, uh, you know, uh, yeah, as I've talked to a uh, guy I'm going to hang out with tomorrow, my, my gun training guy, um, uh, Greg Hamilton, he's, uh, you know, he, one of the things he mentioned in our podcast was that, uh, you know, you can put yourself in risk situations um, where you can build courage uh, without necessarily dying. Uh, they're kind of you know near risk situations, whether it's like uh, mountain climbing or things where you could die, but you probably won't. You know, but it still trains your brain in that in that way of having to deal with that. So we can, you know, obviously fighting is one of those things too. I mean, you you know, to deal with someone punching you in the face is is something you have to get past. You don't just magically get past it. Uh, you know, so you know uh, there are ways to develop courage uh, in the modern world. Although you know, obviously we're not all gonna. Uh, go into battle, swinging battle axes anytime soon, uh, unless the collapse happens and, and then, you know, we'll, you know, pick up our battle axe and, and let God sort it out. But, uh, uh, you know, as far as mastery, I mean, mastery is the thing that I think modern world is focused on, mm-hmm. uh, you know, not in terms of masculinity necessarily, but, uh, you know, um, we all have skills that we've mastered and you know, that we're competent in, um, you know, pretty much, I mean, obviously there are some people who are completely incompetent, but, uh, you know, even they're probably good at like one video game or something. You know? Or accounting. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or accounting or whatever. I mean, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm learning uh, Adobe Illustrator today. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I mean, we all have little skills that we, we, we know. It's just whether they're the, the skills that would make us good at being a man. Um, so I think it's good to take time out to learn those skills too, even if they're not necessarily the ones that you're good at. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm an artist by disposition. Uh, so, you know, it's like I, I can, like I said, I'm, today I'm going to go spend probably eight hours working in Adobe Illustrator to design this T-shirt uh, for a friend of mine. But, uh, you know, uh, I'm also going to take some time out to do some hand grinding I'm training tomorrow because it's important. And, uh, you, know, I, you know, so I think we have to take some time out to do those things, you know, to the extent we're able to. So that's, um, that's courage. One caveat to what you said, and perhaps that, uh, that requires a little bit of... Uh of going further, is that um, to have real courage, you have to, well, in today's world, you need, you can either go for some extreme sports, um, and yes, that gets your brain to some, to some, to, to understand a little bit of that, 
but it's borderline recklessness in some cases, which is not, I think, the same thing as courage, but also uh, perhaps shows that we have a lack of, because you need courage for a meaning, right? And that meaning, as you described perfectly in your book, is that um, the meaning is your tribe. The, the, and and the, in fact, the, the whole tribe, not just the men, but also the women and yeah. children. And um, a lot of men today w might have courage to protect the women and children, although sometimes when there is aggressions in the street, you see that uh, um, men uh, not even run away, but they, 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 they fall down and they let whatever needs to happen to their women. And um, which which defies my my, my understanding, but um, um, courage needs a meaning. Our world has no meaning, right? What's right? So how do we get back to a meaning? And and I, I think you ex you explain it well in your books. But what's your overall way to get meaning through through a tribe or through a group of friends and or or in a society that people choose to live in? Well, I mean, like, like I said, you have to know who your we is. I mean, you have to know who, if you, if you don't, when you talk about we and you don't know who that is, then you don't have one. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, you have to understand who your group of people is that you would actually try to uh, defend and, and, uh, and build connections with them. And um, so that defending them matters. You know, I mean, if you don't have connection, deep connections to people, I mean, those deep connections to people are actually what make defending something matters. And, uh, you know, Deep connections also, because men will die for ideas. Uh, you know, and I think that you know, understanding what your ideas are are also important. What values you really have, uh, you know. But uh, I mean, my point about courage that I wanted to make, uh, just just to be clear uh, about building courage through like sports and whatever. Um, that's so that when you have to defend your tribe, you have some. You have to build that pattern of being able to take risks. Because a lot of people think that, you know, when the time comes, they're going to step up, but they've never been in that situation before. They've, it's like, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, if you haven't been, a, if you don't practice being assertive, uh, you're not, you know, mm -hmm. like you're not going to be the guy who does that. I mean, you might, but it's, it's a long shot. I mean, it, it, in all likelihood, you're going to be the guy who goes like this because you've never dealt with that situation. You've never dealt with fear. And so it's good to, I mean, practice dealing with fear so that you can defend your people, not just uh, so that you can make cool YouTube videos. Now, when you define, and you said when you, when you, when you train to like everyone, yes. uh, I believe, and I, I'm sure you also believe that, in the end it means you like no one. Right. And um, so to have a we, and you say that, you explain that in your book, you need a them. Yes. Now... Them can be a lot of things. In today's world, I, I don't know about your side of the world, but a lot of people start to be defiant and if not completely despising of politicians, governments, authority. And this is the start of something. Would you agree with that? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. They, well, they realize that the, there's an illusion that the people who rule us are supposed to have our best interest in heart, uh, you know, almost as if they were like... Uh, a good king, but uh, that that that's increasingly it's obvious that that's not the case. Uh, you know, you talked about immigration and so forth, and that's I mean, you know, when you when you have your leaders going over their out of their way to basically help anyone but their own citizens, uh, I mean, that's it makes it very clear that they they really don't care about their citizens and they really care about this kind of larger global idea, and. Uh, you know, and, and their own careers, and you know, at that very moment. Uh, so I think that yeah, people, and that, this is kind of what I uh, talk about a lot is is uh, you know disconnecting from that idea that those people care about you, because uh, a lot of people still get argue, they they believe that, and then they still get on arguments on the internet. Well, we should do this, and we should do that, and we should, and again, like who's your we? Exactly. Is it, is it billionaires and like and like politicians because they don't care about you? So you have to start, when you talk about who your we is, you have to be, start doing things for the people around you that you care about. Yeah, that's definitely something I, I, I like in your idea is that we cannot, and we as ourselves, cannot be uh, convincing everyone else to move away. We have to tell because it's our duty to tell, but we're not convincing. If people listen, fine. If they don't, so be it. To help yeah. with them, yeah. and um, yeah, exactly. and uh, and that leads me to to 
your website is it still start the world uh my instagram is start the world right uh, right right my, my website is uh is uh, uh jack dash donovan yeah and and one of the one of the slogans that you have is yes. start the world mm -hmm. and i presume start the world means start the new world what does start the world means to you well uh, and what it's come to mean is uh If, you know, if you don't like the way the world is going, uh, a lot of people say, well, you have to change with the times or like that's an outmoded ma version of masculinity or, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, things just aren't that way anymore. Um, and, and that's it's at that point, you know, are you a man or are you plankton? You know, do you just go with the flow wherever it is or do you, you know, try and move the world in a direction that you we want it to go? In? And uh You know, it's, for me, starting the world is, is to, to stop being plankton and to start in whatever way you can start to make those changes and create the world around you that you actually want and not keep saying, well, we have to adapt to how things are, uh, you know, because then you're just basically doing what you're told. You know, you're, people are presenting you with options and you're selecting from them. Uh, you know, it's, it's far better to, you know, if, if, if you don't like the way the world's going, uh, start living differently. Start doing something different, and uh, you know, start your own world. So, in your case, you've um, it's a sort of secession from from society, while maybe not leaving it completely, because we still have to suck it as much as we can, and you can. <laughs> we need bank accounts and, and all that. Yeah. Uh, only very few people can really leave it. Um, and, and, and I, I want to say on that, um, asceticism is is I think it's it, it just retreat. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, if you, I mean, okay, you can go out and live in the mountains somewhere with nobody off grid and no one, and pretend that they can't see you with infrared cameras because they can. <laughs> pretend they can't send a drone to kill you if they want to because they can. But uh, you know, you you can go and live with. But you know what? They could buy that land tomorrow and build a strip mall right beside your little camp. Uh, you can't escape it, so you need to deal with deal with the world and, and live in the now. Because retreating is just, it's just, you know, delaying the inevitable for you. I agree. It's not changing anything. But anyway, go on. Go no, on. no, I agree. And uh, and this is all my concept of sustainable autonomous base. It's something you build. You build yes. a base and you need to do it with other people as much as you can and, and get on. And as a base, you build. And you can build a new world. And when that new world uh, becomes large enough, when the collapse comes and you hopefully survive, As, as, as a group, as a people, as a tribe, maybe. Well, then you take over. You take over the ruins, maybe, but at least you take over, and there's no more of those uh, fuckheads that, um, that tell you how to live. And it's your force, and maybe you ally with other tribes to fight other tribes, and then it's again us and them, and we start the whole fucking cycle again for the next 10,000 years. But at least it's fun. At least it's anthropological. It, it, it goes to our, to, our, to our roots, and it's not this... Yes. This Conchita Wurst and uh, and uh, and uh, all these uh, political correct stuff in campus. I mean, who wants to go to college anymore, anyway? Yeah. But um, but yeah. So start the world out, out completely. And Way of Man uh, teaches us a, a big chunk on how we can start to to live to that, right? Yes. Now, you mentioned new books. What's what's your future projects? Oh, right now I'm trying to uh, polish off uh, a, a book. I mean, like I said, I, I've been uh, spending a lot of time uh, in, on this tribe that I've been building. Uh, I've uh, you know, joined a, a group called the Wolves of Vinland, and uh, you know, they're kind of working on building a tribe. And uh, so, and now I have kind of my own chapter out here in the, in the Pacific Northwest, and so now I have prospects, like a motorcycle gang kind of, and so I have all these guys I have to talk to and whatever. <laughs> so uh, it's, you know, uh, that's, it's kind of my part-time job right now. But, uh, uh, you know, I'm trying to polish off this book uh, it's called uh, Becoming Barbarians. And it has to do with uh, really adopting the tribal mind. Uh, you know, because I have a lot of people who, you know, like my ideas. They like the way of men, but they're still attached to, say, the idea of America and being Americans and being citizens and all the stuff that, you know, is really just a way that they're being used. And, uh, you know, you know it, it's fine to say, okay, we should be more tribal. But, uh, you know, that, that re it requires a great deal of uh, deprogramming. 
because we're used to thinking in this Western sense as if we're standing in ancient Greece talking to all the, the, the assembly before us and we'll make an argument and it'll be taken seriously and we will, you know, we'll, we'll do what's best for us. And, and so they're used to reasoning that way. But, uh, you know, like I said, you, those were little city states that were just dealing with what was best for them. And, uh, you know, we're, when we talk about America, it's 300 million people. And there is no best for everybody in that group. So, you know, you have to start uh, breaking it down and, and choosing because we, you know, we have the media out there and, and uh, uh, you know, you're, if, if there's a car crash on the other side of the country that's really bad, you hear about it. And you're supposed to care about those people who are strangers to you who will never see. They're really no different in any functional way than a fictional story. Are you saying? You know? Are you saying you don't care about every single suffering of the world? Are, aren't we all human and citizens I of the world? You know what I don't even know about. There are probably horrible things going on in China right now that we don't even know about. But it's like there are certain things that the media curates for us mm, to care course. about. And you, so it's just certain little things. And so I mean, uh, one of the things I'm saying to people is, is uh, you know, you know, you know, choose the people who you're going to care about and ignore that stuff because you can't. You, you really don't care. You're just making. A theatrical display of care, you know. I mean, you know, we don't. You're not really. You don't care about that girl who was shot five thousand miles away. They just gave you some sad pictures to look at, like a sad movie, and they pulled your triggers, and you're responding to that. Care about the person next door to you, <laughs> you know, who you actually know and you actually have a relationship, and who would actually maybe be there for me for you if something bad actually happened. You know, build that relationship. Don't build this relationship with this person who you'll never meet. I agree. So, so becoming a barbarian is the way to um, to survive, uh, if only in your mind, sanely, in the same way. Yeah. Uh, right. Whatever's going to happen in the world. Yes, absolutely. I mean, you, you, I mean, it, and it, you know, it's barbaric in the sense that, uh, you know, to many people, that sounds incredibly callous. Like, oh, I'm not supposed to care about these refugees that, you know, I don't. 10,000 miles away. I don't either. I don't. And most people actually don't. But I think they should all drown. I mean, for as much as I care. Yeah. I don't know them. I don't care. I didn't care them before. I don't care them now. And I will not care them in the future when we'll have to fight with them here. Yeah. What, yeah. what can yeah. I say? I mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, it's like, yeah, I don't, I don't care about any of these people. But, you know, to a lot of people, that's barbaric. And, and so, yeah. uh, you know, in many ways, you know, uh, to, to become really tribal, we have to actually get past that that reflex of like, oh, I have to care about everything. So you're you're um, continuing the on the steps and and uh, of Nietzsche. Yes. Yeah, yeah. In many ways. Yeah. 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 Because the the um, the Superman that he was uh, thinking of was someone who could go beyond uh, all this silliness that he was already perceiving in the world, and he got he got mad, literally. Yeah. Out of all yeah. that, out of out of that, but. So, yeah. so the, um, the becoming a barbarian. Well, I certainly look forward to, to to that book. And when when is that coming out in in the US? Um, as soon as I finish it. So you know, I have to finish it, and then I'll design it, and then I'll put it out. So I would like to get it done by the end of this year. That was okay, so like, soon. So yeah, yeah. Well, that that's excellent. Maybe we can get it in, in in France as well. That'd be fantastic. Yeah, that that would be great. So um, other than other than so you have your your tribe that you're joined that you have you are creating this. Um, uh, these projects. What else? What else can you tell us uh, of your activities? Anytime you you plan to to come and visit our dying dying Europe? <laughs> um, maybe I don't know. I thought about learning German. Uh, I've kind of been playing with that a little bit, uh, and uh, maybe going over there because uh, you know the book's been doing well, so I might be able to do that. You know, like uh, come over to Europe a little bit because I've never done that. I've actually never been to Europe. Oh. Uh, so um, I would like to give it. It looks a, a bit shot. like Africa. You would see it's quite uh, it's quite something. I, I have heard that, which really is not a great sales pitch. <laughs> yeah, no. On the other hand, no. on the other hand, it's not as bad as uh, it's not as bad as LA or, or Atlanta. But it's it's uh, it's right. not bad. It's not bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so the um, I was I was joking with uh, when I wrote the foreword to your book in the, the French version of your book. I was joking that we met at this uh, conference in Washington D.C. Yes. and that we both discovered to be uh, big fans of obviously. Uh, the, one of the best movies ever, and we, we made a podcast that goes around on That's that. That's my by favorite way. podcast that I've done yeah, I, 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 <laughs> on I uh, on Conan. Conan. We did one on the zombies that was quite 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 good as well um, on social zombies. But um, but Conan, yes. John Milius, gr one of the greatest movies ever. And uh, I was I was writing in, on 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 the forward that you are actually a bigger fan than I was. 
because you actually got the tattoo of, of the god of Conan Crom on your on your knuckles. And uh, and I want to show people that that's true, and that wasn't yes. that wasn't yeah, bullshit yeah. from from me. It was really true, and I I I think that was uh, that was quite something. Yeah, certainly, yeah, yeah. certainly. Look, I um, first of all, thank you very much for your for your time for for this show. We should do one in in a, in, a, in a few months on maybe other topics, but certainly uh, I look forward. Maybe maybe if you come to Europe, you could do a tour in France, and uh, uh, you know your your book sells very well for the to the. Um, uh, to the uh, the people who are tough, the the, the, the special police, the the, uh, uh, the pagan. There are some pagans, and and they like this book. Yeah. And all the people who are in the mindset of um, okay, this world is going to collapse. What should we do? How we should behave? These people right. really like they like your book, and we certainly should do some. If you ever come to Europe, let me know. We'll organize a tour, and uh, and and meet some media and and, and trash them, and uh, and fight club <laughs> fight club their faces. And um, and uh, that would and, be a good story. Yeah, yeah, that would be that would be fun. Let's trash trash Paris, or whatever is left. Jack Donovan trashes Paris. Yeah, I like it. I like it. <laughs> Anyways, thanks a lot, and uh, I really, you know, for people who listen to us, you know, get to read the Way of Man in whatever language. I'm Deutsch now, also in <laughs> Portuguese, and uh, and uh, it's really a great book. Jack, take care Bye. and. Uh, I'll, I'll see you soon. All right, thank you. Ciao.